Uh, welcome to part two of the fundamentals of Python series. Uh, in this part, we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into the basic data types, and we'll look at two of the basic data types in this part, uh, which are numeric and string data types. Okay, so let's get right to it. In part one, we learned around variables and how to create simple variables. So let's go on to create a simple numeric variable. Uh, let's call it num1 and let's say it holds a data value 5. Now, according to you know what we learned in the previous part, uh, this is the variable name and this is the, the data value. Now, with numeric data types, Python allows you to do simple operations. Uh, let's look at some basic ones. We can do simple arithmetic operations like uh, additions, uh, multiplication, and so on and so forth. Now, whenever you do these uh, without storing it in any variable, these are just directly going to simply give you the result as you see on the screen here. So in both these cases, uh, you know, this either adds up to 10 or this multiplies to 10. Now, let's try to create two variables holding two values. Now, how do I create two variables? Uh, let me call a variable as num1 and let it hold a value of 5. Uh, we'll define another variable num2 and make it hold a value of 10. Now, if you want to perform arithmetic operations on these two numbers, 5 and 10, using the variables num1 and num2, uh, we can simply use the variable names on either side of the operator. And what this gives us is a result of the operation, which in this case is 15. Uh, similarly, you can do the other arithmetic operations, which are um, multiplication, division, subtraction, and so on. You can also do this with floating point values. So if I have a number 5.5 and 11.3, I can do the same multiplication with floating point values and you know, the result it gives me is a floating point number. Now, uh, notice that I'm just multiplying the two numbers here. I'm not storing the result anywhere. So if I want to use this result in any further operation, I won't be able to use it. So let's try to store it in a third variable. And how do I do that? You know, I can just assign this operation to a variable. So let's say result equal to num1 into num2 and then I can go on to print this result. So if you remember uh, the print command is used to print the value of a variable on the console or on the screen which you see here. So now you know 5.5 into 11.3 the result of this operation is stored in this variable called result and now I can use this variable in any downstream operations I do. Now you know, let's say this result is a floating point result right but I didn't want to see a floating point result I want to only see the integer portion of the result or I want to convert this to an integer. So in order to do that I can use a technique in Python known as typecasting where I'm telling Python that I want to convert this particular result into its integer form and what this efficiently does is it removes the decimal part as you see here and converts the result only to hold the integer now you can store this in another variable let's say result 2 and we can print out this result 2 to see the value of the integer as well. Now, as I said earlier, this process is known as typecasting. You can cast from one type to another. So you can cast from an integer to a float, a float to an integer, integer to a string, and so on and so forth. So now this is, you know, some of the basic arithmetic which you can do with uh, numbers. And when I say numbers, uh, I mean both integers and floating point values. And each of these operations work with either one. Now, uh, one of the interesting operators which you know, most of us might not know uh, is called the modulus operator. 
we all know what the division operator does. Uh, it divides two numbers and gives us the result, right? So, uh, for example, if I divide 10 by 5, I'm going to get the result by result as 2. If I divide 11 by 5, uh, I'm going to get the remainder, uh, the result as 2.2. So, what if I want the remainder from this operation? Now, the modulus operator helps us with that. So 11 divided by 5 gives us 2, which leaves a remainder of 1. And this modular op modulus operator gives that remainder of 1. Now, in a similar to what we did above, we can store the operation in a variable. And you know, as I was saying, we can now use this variable for downstream operations. So we can print the value of the variable here. And you see that it gives us a remainder of 1. Now, this modulus operator uh, is used a lot in you know things like finding out the even numbers finding out odd numbers prime numbers and so on which we'll you know, see in the further lessons now let's get to strings and you know see how we can perform some operations with strings as well uh, if you remember uh, what i'm doing here is i'm just entering a piece of text to demarcate between uh, the numeric operations and the string operations. Now, strings can be defined in single quotes or double quotes. Right? And that's what we saw in the previous lesson as well. So here I'm defining a variable called var1 or var1. And I'm assigning a data value called string now what can i do with strings let's look at some of the basic operations now similar to how you know we could do some arithmetics on numbers we can do some arithmetic operations on strings as well so what are those now we can add two strings together for example uh, string one plus string two and what this does for us is it concatenates the two strings together, meaning it joins the two strings. So you have string one, string two. Now, if you want these separated by a space, we can just simply give a space here, and that will separate the two uh, strings for us. Uh, this is very useful when you want to concatenate two things, uh, join multiple strings together. And you can do the same thing you know, with variables as well. So let's say along with uh, var1, I define something called var2. And I say is nice. So ideally now, when I join var1 and uh, var2, uh, I'll get string is nice. But in this case, it gives me an error saying name var1 is not defined. Uh, that essentially means that I haven't run this particular cell here. So remember, in Jupyter Notebooks, everything runs sequentially. So you have to run a previous cell in order to run the next cell using that variable. So let's go and run uh, this cell which contains var1 and var2. And now I can run this successfully and you see the two strings are joined together and we get string is nice. Uh, if I want a space, I can give a space here. I can rerun this and I can get the result again. Now the second arithmetic operation which you can do with strings is multiplication. And you can essentially multiply a string with a number. So let's say, for example, we have uh, a string called sample. And we multiply that by a number 2. Now, you know, you must be thinking, can I multiply a string and a number together? What, what is it going to give me? But let's observe the result here. What do you see? You see that the string sample has been duplicated. It occurs twice. Meaning whatever number I multiply it with, it duplicates those many times. So this is very useful when you want to you know, repeat the same, same string multiple amount of times or you want to duplicate some data types. Now, apart from these two arithmetic operations, uh, the other operations such as division or subtraction are not possible with strings. So if you try to do something like sample one, divided by sample 2 
uh, it's not going to give you anything. It's going to throw you an error saying the division operand is an unsupported operand. Uh, similarly, uh, you know, if you try to do subtraction uh, of two strings, sample one minus sample two, uh, it's going to end up giving you the same result as well. So it's going to say that the operand is not supported. That means I cannot subtract two strings. Now, let's look at a very important concept with strings. And this concept is known as indexing. What does that mean? Uh, let's define a new string. Uh, let's call it new string. And let's take my name as the name of the string. Now, this string is made up of six characters, A, D, I, T, Y, and A. Now, each of these six characters is associated with a number. And this number is known as the index number. So if I try to access the first index, which is A, I would have to use the index number zero along with the name of the variable. Why do I have to use zero? Python is a zero index language, meaning every index in Python starts from zero. So in this string, things start at zero and zero denotes A. And you know, as you go along, D is the first index, I is index number two, T is index number three and so on. So similarly, if we wanted to get Y from this particular string, uh, we can get that using the corresponding index number, which in this case would be zero, one, two, three, four. So if we do four, uh, it'll return a value in Y, which is basically the fifth character in the string or the fourth index. If you try to input an index, which is greater than you know the number of characters in the string it'll give you an error saying the string index is out of range meaning the sixth index does not exist in this string because you have zero one two three four five and after five you don't have a sixth index now you can also access the indices from right to left as opposed to left to right and you can do that using the negative numbers, meaning if this starts from zero, this starts from minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. So if we do a minus one, uh, you will notice that I get the last letter from the string. And if I do a minus two, then I'll get the second last letter and so on. Now that's how you can access you know, the individual characters uh, in a particular string. Now, if you want to get a bunch of characters and not just one single character, you, we can do that using a concept known as slicing, meaning that you know, we are getting a slice or a part of the string. So you know, let's just take the same string again. And let's say in this case, I wanted to get the first three characters, which is A, D, and I. Uh, you know in one command so I can do that by saying okay I want to start from the zeros index and I want to go up to index number two which is zero one and two so in that case I would say zero colon three now why zero colon three uh, because in Python uh, everything starts from zero and goes up to n minus one. So in this case, when I do zero is to three, it will get me zero, one, and two, uh, three not being included. So similarly, if I want to get ADIT, then in that case, uh, I would do zero is to four, and this will get me index number zero, one, two, and three, and up to four. It won't get me the fourth index. Now, this concept is known as slicing in Python, which means I am getting a substring from a particular string. Now, that's all for this part. In the next part, we will 
look at how we can enhance slicing a little more. And we'll also look at the other basic data types, uh, which are Boolean and deep dive a little more into operators. If you have any questions regarding this part, uh, do reach out to me. My email address is in the description.